Welcome to Corby's Book Club, where I tell you about books that I've read that I think you might enjoy. She was a book nerd, she had blonde hair. Well, I've read a few things so far during the old pandemic, but none so good as this. Angle of Repose by Wallace Stegner. Published in 1971, it won the Pulitzer Prize that year and is widely considered one of the best novels ever written about the American West. Some critics have even called it one of the most important American novels of the 20th century. But who cares? I've never been one to be swayed by critical acclaim. The fact is, Angle of Repose is a joy to read. Even though it runs at a little more than 600 pages, it's one of those books that you find yourself reading more and more slowly as you get to the end, so as to make it last as long as possible. Stegner's complicated novel is about a man trying to understand his failed marriage by exploring his grandparents and their own marital odyssey. The narrator, Lyman, is that man. And he writes of grandparents he knew as a small boy when they were nearing the end of their lives. He understood even then that his grandmother, Susan Burling Ward, was a woman of consequence and reputation. He admired her then, and now, 50 years later, he sets out to write her story and her husband's, the hardworking but soft-speaking Oliver Ward. The principal sources of Lyman's investigation are the hundreds of letters his grandmother wrote to her best friend, which provide the facts and feelings of some of the more memorable characters in American literature. Angle of Repose is really two stories in one. It jumps back and forth between present day 1960s and the last quarter of the 19th century. The narrator is at once a writer of the tale and a character within it. Now retired from a respected career as a college professor and historian, he's moved into the cottage that his grandparents built and in which many of their possessions still remain. He spends the novel reconstructing their lives, surrounded by his grandmother's letters and the many, many drawings for which she was famous. The story he tells discovers, could be another way of seeing it, is the story of how a young woman of great promise, talent, and connections married or maybe mismarried a quiet engineer who preferred prairie winds to parlor talk. It's the story of a couple who weren't well matched, but who still managed to make a marriage work. I like a lot of different kinds of stories, but the ones that I like best seem to have a personal consequence to them. This is a work of fiction, Stegner maintains, and the letters he borrowed to create the character of Susan Ward and with which he populates the novel were in fact written by someone not related to him at all. Nonetheless, there is a sense of urgency to the story's telling. You feel as you read along that these people, flawed as they are, are still good people, interesting and industrious. And their lives have a lesson for us as readers as they did for the narrator who writes about them. What does it take to make a marriage? Along the way, you meet several interesting characters from two different historical epochs. Lyman's rheumatic caretaker, Alma, her headstrong Berkeley dropout daughter, Shelley, who tromps around the cottage, braless, pronouncing judgments Lyman finds irritating and naive. Of grandmother Susan's contemporaries, there's Frank, plucky and strapping and devoted, and the unlucky but much-loved English expat, Pricey, plus dozens of characters who briefly jump up on stage to make fresh the spark before taking their leave. Through it all is the thread of clear-eyed appraisal cut with the paternal human empathy for which Stegner's prose is famous. Personal note, a large chunk of the story takes place in the Boise Valley in Idaho. 
it seems that Susan's fictitious husband was for a long time a player in the historically factual effort to bring water to the desert through an enormous series of canals and dams. I grew up in southern Idaho, uh, about 100 miles from Boise, and was myself a benefactor of the greening of the land that brought people and prosperity to that otherwise dry corner of the world. It was fun for me to read about what Idaho, the land, the emptiness, might have been like 100 years before I came to occupy a small part of it. Okay, that's all for this episode of Corby's Book Club. Remember, music keeps you young, but reading keeps you sharp. See you next time. She was a book nerd. She had blonde hair with a paperback in her back pocket.